Hello, this is Mark of CLI Magic, and my daughter wants to say hi as well. Hello. So I created a set of lights, uh, nine lights here, and they're actually real lights. You can see I'm actually putting my finger in front of the, the video camera that's recording them. And I wanted to create this so that you could experiment with different commands you could run to control lights through the command line, something in the real world, uh, so to say. But since there'll be a lot of people going to it at once, and potentially they might just be going crazy when you try and go see them, and it might be difficult for you to actually control and see what you're doing, I thought I'd make a demo video that would demonstrate what the different commands do when you run them. So down here on the web page under example commands, you have a list of commands here. This first one, so the NC command is actually it's a uh, netcat. It's a program that allows you to make connections out to the internet to a host name and a port number. And the dash u means UDP. Uh, so the host that you connect to is lights.climagic.com on port 45444. And it takes UDP packets and forwards them to uh, my home connection where an Arduino interprets the, the data that you send it just you know, numbers one through nine, and then turns on the corresponding light. So you need to use the dash U option for UDP. And you see over here, if you just run this, and if I hit one, it'll turn on light number one. If I hit three, it'll turn on three. If I hit one again, it'll turn off light number one, and so on. If I do three numbers at once, it'll turn all three on and turn them off. Um, another way Another way that you can control it is if you don't have the netcat command, or if well, if you have a netcat command that doesn't work with this dash w0 option, you might have to drop that. Uh, another way you can control it is bash has, the bash shell has the ability to send packets to uh, TCP or UDP ports on a host name through this special device path. So you say slash dev slash and then whatever protocol you want to use. So UDP in this case slash the host name slash the port number. And then you just, you know, send whatever data you want into it. So in this case, we'd be running echo. Let me cancel this first. So we'd be running echo. And you'll need to click on the video once in a while to restart it. This is to preserve bandwidth so that people staying on the page and reading through the page don't use up more bandwidth than they really need to. So you just click on this again, it'll start back up. And so this way, you just run a command and it exits and it turns on the corresponding light. And then we move on to more complex examples. Uh, this is a while loop that will basically simulate being able to press the number and it just changes in real time. So as I press one, it immediately sends a packet. Uh, as it gets a single character from the uh, standard input, and so I can just quickly, you know, hit a bunch of numbers and change the lights all at once just by smashing the keyboard. And then if you want to change all the lights at once, you can just send it multiple packets. I'm sorry, that should be a nine. There should be a nine there too. There's nine lights. Originally there was eight lights, but then my daughter had a birthday, and so I add a ninth light. And you can just change, you know, some lights. And now if I change the state of all lights, it'll shift back and forth kind of like a showbiz light effect <laughs> and then you can do loops where you actually hang on let me reload the page here so you can do loops right there's a ninth light now and one thing to keep in mind is that if somebody else is using the lights at the same time, your changes will basically flip the state of the light. So if it's on, it'll be turned off. If it's off, it'll be turned on. 
And if they do something at the same time, you'll have to, uh, you might cause some interference to happen. This will send random lights. I need to change this to a nine. So this will just turn on a random light by using the random number and then modulating it across nine and adding one so that zero becomes one and eight becomes nine uh, because modulo uh, chooses a number between zero and whatever and uh, one less than the number that you use as the modulant. And then another function I added just uh, so that people could kind of educate themselves about ASCII uh, bits is you can send you can send just a character after the letter B and it'll basically turn on the lights correspond the corresponding to the bits that make up that character in in ASCII. Um, so here I'm saying the let I'm sending a clear statement to make sure that the lights have all been cleared. And then uh, and that'll send sending a clear will actually send a clear back to the Arduino and actually clear all the lights. So try to be nice about that. Uh, when you're playing around with this and other people are doing it as well. Thank you. And so if after this sends a clear statement, it'll send the uh, B and then capital Z. And that is, right. So capital Z is 5A in hex. And we can convert that like this. So the lights are actually in little endian order um, bitwise, uh, but the output of BC is going to be in big ND in order bitwise. So the the greatest that bit is at the most significant bit is at the left side. And here the mo most significant bit is on the right side. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So let me run this. And there you see there's a ninth bit of you know, so <laughs> that's just going to be blank all the time for, for this kind of operation. And uh, but you can see it represents the bits of different ASCII characters. I'm doing a clear here. But if I don't do the clear, it'll just flip the state. So that turns it off. But then if I do like a, you know, a D, it'll add those bits. To whatever was there. So this was set up by, uh, you'll see a picture down here. It's an Arduino uh, with an Ethernet shield on it hooked up to two shift registers. Uh, shift registers are little IC chips that can turn three, um, just three inputs into up, up to basically an infinite number of uh, outputs or inputs even. Uh, in this case, I have two, uh, two shift registers, which was required to do nine. Uh, but with two shift registers, you could do up to 16 lights. Um, and then those are just the resistors for the LED lights. And this is a Raspberry Pi that is hooked up to a USB webcam. And in order to make this so that it would work for my house, I needed to set up a couple of proxies out on the internet, uh, basically just some virtual machines I'm in control of. And uh, one of them uses SoCat, uh, actually the beta version of SoCat, which allows me to set up a UDP filter program so that I can filter out 
uh, bad data from going through the stream and also log each, uh, com each change that is sent to the lights. That way I can keep track of what's going on um, at the actual uh, server side. And then the SOCAT forwards on the connection to uh, my home address. You see here, this is this is SOCAT without the filter in it, and then this is SOCAT with the the uh, the new version of SOCAT, SOCAT 2.0, actually has the ability to do these pipelines, and I was able to put in a filter program here. And then uh, the other stream is for um, this uh, MJPEG uh, video stream. I tried some of the other. Uh, real-time streaming, um, you know, like live streaming websites like uh, Twi Twitch and YouTube, and uh, they were too slow because they would actually add about a 15-second delay to the stream, which wouldn't make it very, very much fun for people who are trying to change the lights in real time. They'd have to wait too long. Um, so I set up this MJPEG stream using the software motion uh, which is a webcam uh, a webcam controller basically that can output an mjpeg stream and then mjpeg relay uh, is a program that can split that up so that one stream just has to go from my house out to the internet and then on a you know on a server where i have like th you know several terabytes worth of bandwidth um, of monthly bandwidth for cheap and and it can handle you know a gigabit at at once uh, I can split out the connection that way I don't have a whole bunch of people overloading my home connection so that's it I hope you have fun with it and I'll see you next time